You know, kissing circles are amazing. They're beautiful. They can have so many different patterns. But they're also the most wonderful grounds for mathematical exploration. What we're looking at here is something called an Apollonian gasket. Now a gasket is a, normally a piece of metal filled with holes that mechanics and others use. An Apollonian gasket uh, can be any shape. It doesn't have to be a circle, it could be a triangle, it could be all sorts of things. And it's filled with circles or kissing circles. But not just beautiful, interesting. For instance, look at those numbers. Want to have a guess as the next one? Ooh. So we're talking not just about geometry, we're talking about number theory, number patterns as well. And this is something that's fascinated mathematicians, or anyone with a mathematical interest, for a very long time. The poem that you see there, by Frederick Soddy, published in 1936. Now, Frederick Soddy is remembered not for his poetry skills. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry. He discovered isotopes. But, in his heart of hearts, he was a mathematician too and he got caught up in kissing circles. He followed on from the work of many others, but particularly someone, another name that you're more likely to have heard of, René Descartes. Now Descartes is known as the father of analytical geometry. Every time you draw a graph on a number plane, it's a Cartesian plane, it's named after him. He provided the link between algebra and geometry in graphs. Perhaps it's not surprising that he was also interested in kissing circles. Imagine two circles kissing. Now I had a third and a fourth to kiss both of these. Let's have a look at how this can be done in GX Web. Now I remind you that GX Web is a free browser-based software package that has the most wonderful, simple, dynamic geometry combined with the foundation of computer algebra. You see how easy it is to draw some circles? We now make them kiss with the click of a single button. We've given their, um, named their radii, but done it in an unusual way. Instead of A, B and C as the radii, I've called them 1 over A, 1 over B and 1 over C. The reciprocal of the radius is quite a useful tool when studying our kissing circles. It's got a special name, it's called the curvature or bend of the circle. The bend, how curvy or bendy the circle is, can be thought of as related to its radius or its size. For instance, imagine the circle got bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually it would look like a straight line with no curvature. So a straight line is really just a circle with infinite curvature. Now as the circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller, like the ones we see here, you see they get more and more bendy. So as the, as the radius increases, curvature decreases. As the radius decreases, the curvature increases. You might have noticed at the end that when we ask for the radius 
of the other circles that we added to our first two, we were given a formula. That formula is called Descartes' formula. Descartes' kissing circle theorems describes a beautiful and perhaps surprising relationship between kissing circles. For any three circles tangent to each other, two other circles exist. One inner between the three and one bounding the three. And all are related by a quadratic equation. So in other words, if the circles have curvature A, B, C and X, and, so, and hence radius 1 over A, 1 over B, 1 over C and 1 over X, then Descartes found that this can be expressed as a quadratic equation. A plus B plus C plus X all squared is equal to twice the square of the sum of each of them. Which actually goes to explain our friend's poem. For pairs of lips to kiss may be involves no trigonometry, but tis not so when four circles kiss, each one the other three. Four circles to the kissing come, the smaller are the benter. The bend is just the inverse of the distance from the centre. Though their intrigue left Euclid dumb, there's now no need for rule of thumb, since zero bends are dead straight line and concave bends have minus sign. The sum of the squares of all four bends is half the square of their sum. Soddy was so impressed with Descartes' work that he wrote a poem about it. So the numbers we see on this uh, model uh, represent the curvature of each circle. At the centre you'll see a minus one. The circle that envelops, that bounds all the others, is denoted with a negative curvature. The others are all positive. But what's interesting is, these are all whole numbers. They're all integers. Did you know with the first four curvature values of an Apollonian gasket are integers, then all subsequent circles will have whole number values. No matter how many that is. Remember our diagram here, we had... I stopped at 500 because more than that seemed to be showing off. All whole numbers. Even more interesting, for any integer greater than zero, there will be a gasket defined by the curvatures n, n plus 1, the product of those two, and that product plus 1 more. So for instance, 2, 3, 6, 7. 2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. Look at the next. 3, 4 is a 12, and 1 is 13. These are all Apollonian gasket, the first four elements. What we've got here is a series of activities, explorations, that take students through the various elements that we've been talking about. This one here is focused on Apollonian gaskets and mathematical bubbles. There's one that goes more deeply into Descartes' kissing circles theorem. Each one has some exploratory uh, tools. Most have the opportunity for students to test themselves. So enter three curvatures from kissing circles. So and it puts three in, but you can put your own. Now, if you were paying attention a minute ago, that might suggest something. But let's go on and see. The question is, what's the next? What do you predict as the next circle bend? Now, I could put my answer in, but let's see what the hints show us. We'll put a zero. Check one. Are the three bends in the sequence minus n, n plus one, 
n times n plus 1. There is a lovely pattern to be found for such cases. If not, then use Descartes' formula. But I've broken the formula down into two parts to make its calculation easier. First, calculate the sum of a, b, and c, and then the sum of the product a, b, a, c, and b, c. Then your curvature will be m plus 2 root n. Let's see what that means. So our three numbers, minus 6, 7, and 42, add them up. Minus 6 plus 7 is 1. So 42 plus, uh, plus 1, 43. The next part, and, and I've, I've broken this down because it's quite hard to do in your head, Minus 6 times 7 plus 42, which is 49, plus 7 times 42. Right, it turns out to be minus 294 plus 294, which is 0. Then 43 plus 2 turn, root 0 is 43. Our next number, not surprisingly, minus 6, 7, 42 and 43. So this is a great way for students to become more confident and to explore Descartes' wonderful theorem. Let's put in one of our own. Suppose we went 2, 3, 3, 6. Oops. One too many. 2, 3, 3. What comes next? Well, it's not one of our patterns. Two threes don't make six. So let's go through this again. Three plus three is six plus two is eight. Now, two times six is 12, plus nine and is 21. So we get eight plus two root 21. However, that does not give us a whole number of response. So, in other words, the first three numbers in our pattern do not lead to a fourth integer values. It's still an Apollonian gasket, but it won't be an integer, an integral Apollonian gasket. Now, there's lots of applications and interesting and useful mathematics related to kissing circles. One that interests me in particular involves what are called Fari numbers and forward circles. We have a, um, a whole worksheet on that. The link to the GX web showcase uh, Will be avail is available on uh, below this video in YouTube, and you'll see across the middle of the screen here five activities, which I've called the Kissing Circles Collection, a Kissing Circles Challenge, one on the Arbalus, which is the old Greek term for the shoemaker's knife, fiery numbers and kissing circles, Descartes' kissing circle theorems, and the Apollonian bubbles. Let's go back to our bubbles. So this activity has the wonderful poem and something to play with there, some background information, a little bit about gaskets, some examples of Apollonian gaskets. Look at this one. Two, two, three in between. The next one would be 15. Look at this one. Fiery numbers. If you place your circles between two straight lines, which are really just infinite circles, then that's the basis for fiery numbers. We revisit Descartes' theorem. Because although Descartes and others, including Soddy, explored um, 
all about this theorem and found this wonderful formula that lets you find the next circle curvature. What was not known until quite recently, in fact in the 1990s, was how to calculate the coordinates of subsequent circles for your gasket. So we were real good at finding curvatures. Given the first three, we can find the next one, then the next, and so on. Curvatures weren't a problem. Descartes knew how to do that. But it took until the 1990s for a couple of mathematicians to put it all together and work out how to calculate the coordinates. Because if you're going to draw a gasket, you need to know where to put those circles. Well, it turned out that Descartes' circle theorem worked again, but it was in a surprising way. And I'll, I'll let you explore what that was. Finding the centre. Every one of these activity pages comes with a dynamic exploratory tool that lets you focus and explore all sorts of possibilities. So for instance here we've got a circle that I've placed at the centre called P that can be used by the students to explore, to focus on any of the uh, any of the gasket circles and then we can adjust the curvature or radius and we can adjust its center. So we can actually find quite accurately uh, the center and curvature of any circle in the gasket. And of course there's a lot of gaskets to play with. We can use a spreadsheet to explore lots and lots of different patterns All of these tools are provided with instructions on how to use them. So much to explore. I mentioned, ah, the diagram there shows a thing called the Pappus chain related to the arbalus and once again consisting of um, kissing circles. Fiery numbers are lovely. Suppose you wanted to make a list of every rational number between 0 and 1. Well obviously you'll never get to the end of that but if you were going to be systematic and wanted to do get as many as you could how would you start? Well one approach would be to begin with denominators of fractions. So first list those with denominator zero, 1, which we would count 0, 0 over 1, and 1 over 1. Okay. Now add those with denominator 2. So you've got 0, you've got 1, and you've got a half. Add those with denominator 3. 0, 2 thirds, a half, 2 thirds, and 1. What we're building is a thing called a Fari sequence. And what was discovered was that if you draw circles on each of the points uh, of your Fari sequence, those circles kiss and have um, a very particular pattern for their radii. Lots to explore here and each of these links takes, takes you to one of the exploration pages. And of course at the end of the day, each page contains a, a functioning GX web applet so students can explore on their own um, and uh, discover their own patterns and relationships.